Happy you guys can make it back to part two. We're going to pick up where we left off on our Range Rover repair series. So let's get started. Belt tensioner on. And this is the pulley that I put the chain wrench around when I took the fan clutch off. Uh, as you can see, here's the thread for the fan clutch. So, just in case you're wondering. take off this uh, serpentine belt, this uh, second serpentine belt, get that removed. Alright, so we've got our belt free. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this tensioner here so we can pull the belt out and also this belt is behind this little guard. Okay. So here's our second belt tensioner. There's two serpentine belts. I'm gonna go ahead and label this. Left side and right side so that I don't get mixed up. So this part removed is not the water pump, uh, even though this is what the fan clutch uh, rides on, uh, it's not actually the water pump. Now we can get this second belt off. You can see this belt's wearing out, I don't know if the camera will pick it up. But if your belt's wearing out, uh, it'd be a good time to replace it. Okay, so the next pulley now I'm going to go for is uh, the water pump pulley. I'll go ahead and get that off. Got a couple of idlers here. Let's bust these idlers out. All right, so that was the lower idler pulley. We'll get this upper idler pulley. Bolt bust loose first. Spin it out. There's the upper, and this bolt's really long, so it probably goes all the way through the timing cover. Okay. Next, let's go after this uh, harmonic balancer. Let me get a mirror. 
and put it in there so I can see what size uh, bolt we have and I'll see what we're dealing with in there. Alright, so I think it's a 24 millimeter. Yeah, 24. Okay, so I'm going to put this cardboard down to protect the radiator before I start trying to uh, remove the harmonic balancer. I still might re reuse this radiator. I don't know yet. But I'll just protect it just in case. Okay, so I felt like it moved a little bit. So I'm gonna see if I can get it out with my impact gun at this point. Well, the Ingersoll fits in there, but it wasn't strong enough. So let's see if this little air power Astro pneumatic tool can do. Good job. Oh, this one's a tough one. We're gonna need some breaker bar action on this. So I'm gonna use my chain wrench to lock the pulley down and then I'll pull out a breaker bar. Seems like it's moving. Get a ratchet down.
looks like I was able to start ratcheting the bolt loose, so I'm going to go ahead now and uh, switch to my impact gun and hopefully can run it all the way. Got it free. Some Range Rovers, uh, it is reverse direction, so make sure uh, we figure it out. You figure out what you have, but. On, on this particular uh, model, this is the Jaguar built uh, 4.2 supercharged V8 and a crank bolt. So as we can right. see, uh, if you wrap a rag around uh, the pulley when using a chain wrench, uh, you won't damage the, uh, the belt grooves. So just a little tip. Okay, so now we can go and get a puller tool. I believe it just has a uh, bolt holes uh, inside this uh, harmonic balancer so I'm gonna go and get my puller tool and we'll get this thing pulled off Alright, so let's just take a look and make sure that the tool is lined up in the right spot. And it is not. So let's back it out and readjust it. Check, make sure it's lined up. And now it's in the correct store. Run it out. That's when these long Tecton 38s come in handy. So we got our harmonic balancer off. I'll sh once I take this tool off, I'll show you where the two holes are. You want to get your tool uh, lined up. At. You can see right here, these two small holes uh, at the top and bottom. Uh, this is where you're going to put your, um, your puller tool, the bolts. So you're going to thread it in there. So you can see where I marked it, uh, the two spots, uh, once I found the hole. That way, uh, once I got my tool lined up, I could just slide the bolts right over these marks and uh, be in the vicinity of, of the bolt hole. And one other thing to note, once you get the pulley off, there is a little sleeve in here. So don't lose the sleeve. Make sure you put it back in there when you reinstall it.
I noticed some like flaky white residue on this water pump and on the engine block. So I think whoever uh, had this vehicle uh, tried to use like some cylinder head gasket repair, the stuff you pour in a radiator. Uh, if you're watching this video out there, uh, take my word for it. Save your money. Uh, that stuff doesn't really work. Um, the only way to truly fix a head gasket issue is to actually replace the head gasket. And to be honest, in most cases, um, the head gasket is really not the issue. In most cases, the cylinder head uh, gets warped from overheating. So uh, even just slapping a gasket is not a good idea. You need to make sure the cylinder head is straight. Uh, I've fixed, I've gone behind other people and other shops before in the past. Uh, for uh, head gasket issues and a customer still having an overheating issue and they're getting ready to get rid of the engine because they think you know there's some odd problem but it's really not I've tore the engines back down and checked the warpage limit and it's like way out of spec send it to the machine shop get the head flattened and put a good quality gasket on and some new head bolts and problem solved so uh, yeah never use this head gasket sealer stuff if that's what this is uh, it doesn't work all right so we need to get the valve covers off uh, before we take the timing cover off so we'll start uh, see we may start by trying to get this uh, wiring harness moved out of the way Looks like uh, the wiring harness goes inside this big box right here. I'm gonna see if that's necessary. We may be able to just you know, work around it. <clears throat> All right, so let's start getting these valve covers out.
before I pull this valve cover up, so I'm looking at this, and it's probably going to get in the way. So let's go ahead and just get this out the way now. But I'm pretty sure it's going to be in the way. So this little bracket has uh, zip ties and things uh, still on these wires, so I'm just going to leave it like this. So I think uh, I should be able to get the uh, valve cover off the way it is. Let's get our cam cover up. Oh wait, we got one bolt. us to the driver's side. Uh, on this side you can see there's an AC line uh, going across here and uh, I'm going to see if I can get this valve cover line or this valve cover up uh, and get around this uh, AC line which I think I can and once the valve cover is gone uh, that should create quite a bit of space uh, to be able to get the cylinder head up too. So I'm going to see if I can get uh, the cylinder head up without having to discharge the AC system because the AC system is charged. Uh, if I'm not able to, then I'll just go ahead and discharge the AC. I do have a small little portable uh, recovery machine. So uh, if that's the case, we'll go ahead and get all the um, refrigerant out but I'm gonna try to go get around it first so let's see if we can
so there's one large bracket bolted to the cylinder head. Let's get that off from the back. a big 18 millimeter bolt in the back holding what looks like a purge solenoid on So it's going to make it a lot easier to get the air box out. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and take the take this air box out. definitely needs to be replaced. Right, let's bust these valve cover bolts out. So I'm going to screw the dipstick nut back on. 
so we don't lose it. Anyway, guys, we got the valve cover off. Let's keep moving. Uh, next thing we're going to take off is uh, the timing cover. And in order to get the timing cover off, I'm going to have to jack it, jack it up, grab a creeper. Roll All right, guys. Well, at this stage of the repair, the vehicle needs to be raised up. As you can see, I got it jacked up here and got it supported on jack stands so that I can grab my creeper and slide under. Now, and I've went ahead and done all the repairs already underneath the vehicle because I can't get the camera under there and film that stuff. But I will explain everything that I've done. But at this stage, the timing cover can now uh, be unbolted, which we'll do here in a second. But let me show you guys exactly what you need to do in order to get the timing cover. Now that you got the vehicle in the air, you wanna go ahead and uh, grab your favorite uh, penetrant oil spray and go ahead and spray the uh, exhaust nut. So there's two nuts you wanna go for uh, right at the, uh, the exhaust manifold to downpipe flange. Uh, you wanna go up above the catalytic converter and all the way up to the exhaust manifold. Uh, to the downpipe. So these are the two nuts and a 13 millimeter socket to get them off. All right guys, I thought it'd be good to mention uh, what I use to get those nuts off because uh, you gotta kinda come at it at an angle and there's really not a whole lot of room in there. Uh, so you're gonna need a long extension like this, uh, at least 18 inches or longer. Uh, with a 13 millimeter and you're gonna have to use some type of swivel joint because uh, you have to come at it at an angle wobble sockets not gonna cut it uh, you need something that's gonna give you uh, quite a bit of an angle to get to it uh, a tool like this is not gonna work because uh, it's too fat around the base of this tool uh, so you're gonna need something a lot slimmer and I have these uh, Stillman Pro uh, extensions that have a swivel head on it. And you can see it gives you a much slimmer access with the same swivel joint. Uh, if you don't have any sockets like this, or excuse me, extensions like this, uh, you could check out my Amazon store. I have some in my Amazon store. Or you could use this method. So take a typical universal joint like this. And we all know that these things, once you get a socket on them, uh, the weight of the socket will make the swivel uh, fall over and it's going to be almost impossible to get to the nuts. So what you want to do is just take a little bit of electrical tape and wrap it around the swivel like this so that the socket uh, won't be so heavy and make the uh, swivel joint fall over. Then you can get a, a long extension in and get at it like this and you'll be able to get to those two nuts uh, on the exhaust flange to the exhaust manifold connection. Hey guys, so you don't want to take your exhaust nuts off quite yet. Uh, you want to give your penetrant oil uh, some time to work. Uh, so you want to take off all the front accessories first. Uh, once you get all that stuff off and once you get uh, ready to remove the timing cover, then go under and uh, take off your exhaust nuts. That should give you plenty enough time to let the penetrant oil do its thing. Uh, it's not magic spray. You actually have to allow the penetrant oil time to do its job. In most cases, if you give it enough time, it will now work. to the front of the motor, uh, let me show you everything I did uh, up until this point. So first thing you want to do here uh, is this oil filter housing. Uh, you want to get that removed. Uh, there's only three bolts. You can see the bolt holes there. You can see that on this oil filter housing, I left the oil filter on uh, just for now. And then I left all the lines attached and I just sort of uh, zip tied it away from the um, timing cover. And that's all you really need to do. You want to put a catch pan underneath, of course, because it is going to leak oil. And be careful, there are two O-rings uh, on the back of this filter housing. So in the middle of the three bolts, you can see there's two O-rings there. So be careful. Uh, 
if you lose one, make sure you replace it. Uh, if these O-rings are flat, go ahead and replace them. Mine seem to be in pretty decent shape, so I may reuse them if they're not in my head gasket set. Uh, but they probably will be in the head gasket set, and I'll go ahead and replace them. So on this side, this is your alternator bracket. Your alternator will be sitting right here. Uh, there's three bolts on the alternator, and they're not hard to excess at all uh, the top one you can just go through right here right up at the front and then there's two bottom ones with the vehicle jacked up in the air and you slide under uh, you can see those two bolts and get to them pretty easy uh, once you remove all the covers off the bottom so then go ahead and remove uh, your alternator and then you can see your alternator bracket right here will block you uh, from being able to access uh, this timing cover bolt because it sits in like this. So what you want to do is uh, loosen up the alternator so bracket. So when loosening up this alternator bracket, there's going to be four bolts in total, two at the top, two at the bottom. Uh, the two top ones are easy, the one bottom one's easy, and then you can see there's a motor mount uh, right here. And that's going to prevent you from removing uh, the second bottom one completely. So what you want to do is uh, grab an opening wrench because uh, you can't get a boxed in on it. Get a, a good opening wrench. Don't use a cheap one because you'll round it off. Uh, I have opening wrenches uh, specifically made to grip tight. And you're going to have to bust <coughs> that 10 millimeter socket loose and run it out just until it hits the uh, motor mount. And then with all the other boot, uh, bolts uh, uh, taken out, then you can see there's plenty of space uh, to be able to get the bolts along the time. Okay, so now underneath the vehicle, you're going to remove the power steering pump, which sits uh, directly below the AC compressor. So uh, here's the bracket for it, and it's going to have two bolts in the front. You're going to reach through uh, holes in the pulley, and you're going to unbolt uh, two bolts here, and then there's two bolts in the back that bolt into the power steering pump. So you're going to remove those and that'll come off. Once you get that off, set it down, just let it sit on the frame, keep it attached, keep all the lines attached, and then you're going to remove this bracket because the bracket will block you from getting access to the timing cover bolts. And then there's three bolts here, one at the top, two at the bottom, and it has dowel pins, so just pry the bracket off and uh, that should free you up from the bottom. Okay, so now with the power steering pump gone, uh, it'll give you clear access now to get the AC compressor bolts off pretty easy. So uh, you have to remove the power steering pump in order to get to the AC bolts. So uh, in order to get the AC off, uh, there's going to be three bolts to get the AC off. So the first AC bolt you want to remove uh, is going to be uh, this top one here. Uh, you can access this from the top of the vehicle. It may make it a little bit easier. And then go back down underneath and get this one out. Um, these bolts here with the dowel pins in it are the compressor bolts. And then uh, I do believe this one here is also a, a compressor bolt. And then you want to go and unbolt the actual bracket off the engine block uh, because you, it is attached to the cylinder head and uh, and it blocks the timing cover so it's got to come off so there's going to be a bracket bolt there and a bracket bolt there i'm going to start by pulling the this wiring harness out there's like some little retaining pins that stick into the timing cover from the back side so Let's 
start buzzing these off. So we got all our timing cover, uh, bolts in a bag, we can store them away so we don't lose any. And all of these bolts are the same size, so uh, don't worry about that, you just throw them all in a, a baggie or something like that. So I'm just going to go along with my mirror, look along the edges, make sure we got everything before we start prying. So I'm glad I double checked because there is one more bolt. So make sure you double check before you start prying. Alright, now let's pry it off. Here's the bottom bolts, it's not attached to the oil pan in any way. Uh, just remove uh, all these bolts around the perimeter of the timing cover and pry it free. So let me count the bolt holes for you so you'll know how many bolts to go after. Okay, so I counted 23 bolts. So maybe you could keep track of it while you're uh, removing them. Once you hit 23, go ahead and start prying. And there is a rubber gasket for this, it's not silicone. So make sure you purchase another rubber gasket uh, when you do the reassembly. All right guys, well here we are inside the timing cover. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and stuff some paper towels down into the oil pan because uh, you can drop something into the oil pan. It's not a huge opening, uh, but something small can fall in there. So uh, we'll go ahead and stuff the oil pan so nothing can fall in there and uh, we'll undo the, the timing setup. All right back for lunch. Where were we? I'm gonna move this uh, wiring harness out the way a little bit. Uh, if you want to you can open up this box and uh, unplug it from the uh, control module uh, but I'll just move it up out of the way like this and work around this stuff. It doesn't bother me. I'll 
Okay, <clears throat> we'll start with this side. So we got our two bolts out. Looks like there might be a third. So I think that's all the bolts. Let's see if we can slide this out. So this is the variable valve timing solenoid. So you want to uh, remove these three fasteners right here and then gently slide the solenoid out and careful not to damage the two O-rings. Okay, on this side Once you get the bolt free, let's go ahead and slide the solenoid out. Same thing on this side. I will put this somewhere um, where it won't get damaged. I'm going to put it inside a box and store it away. Uh, these look pretty expensive, so I will store these somewhere safe uh, until you get the motor back together. Alright, so it's pretty self-explanatory now at this point. Uh, let's go ahead and knock off these uh, uh, timing covers uh, starting with the tensioners. So we got the primary chain off. Uh, we want to get these little secondary chains off and uh, you want to take a T60 torque socket uh, right on the slotted area and then go ahead and bust this uh, bolt right here loose in the center. You can go ahead and then bust the second one loose go ahead and slide this bolt out Don't lose the washer attached to it. And then go ahead and slide it out as an assembly. Alright, so let me just give you a close up on the section of the cam uh, where you can put a wrench on. So you can get a wrench right here, make sure you spin the cam and get it positioned just right uh, for your wrench uh, to hold the cam still right here. And then uh, you could go ahead and uh, hold it while you bust the uh, uh, cam sprocket bolts loose. 
Okay, so on this particular motor, uh, in order to uh, bust the head bolts loose, you gotta loosen up the. You gotta free up the cams and pull the cams out. Got our right side uh, intake cam out, and be careful because uh, it does have our trigger. All right, so this is the detorque pattern uh, when we're moving this head. So you can see where one is at the very front in the timing cover. There's two bolts in the timing cover. So go ahead and follow this detorque pattern if you're doing this job. Uh, you don't want to risk warping it. Uh, these parts are very expensive on this car. So just follow the detorque pattern and uh, bust these head bolts loose. Also notice under caution, it says the bolt can only be used twice. Mark the bolt with a center punch. If two punch marks are visible, discard the bolt. You can reuse these bolts if they've never been uh, removed before. You can remove, uh, or excuse me, you can reuse these bolts uh, of course, I would recommend to just replace them, but uh, if they've never been removed, uh, go ahead and make sure the bolts are in good condition. And if they are in good condition, go ahead and reuse them. So the head bolts are a T60 torque socket to bust these head bolts loose. So you came a long way to get to this point. Uh, you don't want to come this far and then strip out a head bolt. So uh, these are torque socket or torque torx head bolts. So you have to make sure uh, you get it in there and seat it in there. So once you got it slotted, just go ahead and uh, give it a good pass. Make sure it's fully seated in there. Or you can bust the head bolt loose. So these head bolts can be reused. Um, they want you to just uh, take a center punch and mark these bolts uh, when if they've been used once. Uh, so they can be used twice. But I went ahead and got new head bolts, uh, but you can reuse these if you want. Let's get rid of this head. Also, I left the exhaust manifold on. Uh, you can reach back here if you want and uh, remove the exhaust manifold, but I chose to just leave it on and pull it off with the head. Check out the gasket. Safe to say we had a blown head gasket. So you can see here that uh, 
the AC compressor, this line you can leave uh, attached. You don't have to discharge the AC. And I got the exhaust manifold still hooked up, which makes it even more difficult. So if you wanted to remove the exhaust manifold on that side, it'd make it that much uh, easier. Alright, as you can see guys, we got both cylinder heads sitting over there on the workbench. So I'm going to go ahead and get these heads prepped and sent over to the machine shop. Make sure you guys tune in for part 3. This is Brian916. See you on the next one.